How's it going guys? Uh, Matt here again, and today we're gonna put together a quick little video for you guys on a pretty cool piercing um, that I really like. It's called the Nate piercing. What exactly is the Nate piercing, you might ask? It's a piercing on the back of your neck, and you have two different jewelry options for that piercing, which means totally different ways to do that piercing. The first way, and probably uh, the most common way, is to do a Nate piercing with a surface bar. So a surface bar is just like you would think a regular barbell where the ends pop up at a 90 degree angle, okay? Now with the surface bar, um, personally, I'm not a huge fan of surface bars anywhere else in the body. I've noticed a lot of rejection with them, um, but for whatever reason it is, on the back of the neck, they work amazing. They heal really, really well, really good, as long as they perform properly. The nape is just one of those areas for some reason that the surface bars just take, and it's awesome. So if you're thinking about getting a nape piercing, surface bars are the way to go, I think. You know, I'm a huge fan of them. They, they work out really, really great. The second way to do it would be with dermal anchors, okay? Dermal anchors also really, really good, really awesome. Um, what's cool about the dermal anchors is you get a couple different options or varieties of, of placements that you could put it in. You can go uh, vertical, you can do whatever you want if you're doing multiples. Um, whereas with the service bar, you only wanna go horizontal. You never wanna go vertical with it, okay? Just horizontal. Now, the only real con to uh, using a dermal anchor instead of a surface bar is you can pop it out. So if you're like um, touching the back of your neck or something, your shirt or whatever gets caught or snagged on it, um, you can pop it out. Not the end of the world, Go back and see your, your local professional piercer. They should be able to pop it back in for you really easily. But just know that could totally happen. Uh, whereas Nate piercing, it's a little bit more durable. You know, you can bump it and knock it a little bit more. Um, even though I strongly recommend against that, a lot of movement, a lot of bumping, knocking can always result in migration um, with the surface bar. Migration being the tissue in between both ends of the bar starts to get thinner and thinner and thinner. Um, to the point where you end up having to take the piercing out. But with that all being said, uh, both of them are great ways to pierce the back of the nape. Not one or the other, I would say, is better. I'm kind of more of a fan of the of the surface bar. Uh, I've seen them really good, really great results with the surface bar. But I would say at the shop lately, we've been doing a lot more with the anchors. They're just popular right now. People like the fact that you can go vertical with them. Um, if you want to do like three or whatever, they just look really cool. When it comes to either one of those piercings, really, really important is uh, for the healing process, don't ever use any hydrogen peroxide, alcohol, neosporin, bactin, antibacterial soap, none of that stuff on it, okay? I think it's all way too harsh. It just does a lot more damage than good. Um, so try and avoid all those products. Any bottle product, really for that matter, try and avoid, okay? Uh, movement as always, no touching, no playing with it, no spinning and rotating it, um, none of that stuff. Um, that stuff is like picking out a scab and that is actually gonna cause a lot of migration. It could, be, it could introduce dirt bacteria into the piercings. You know, just nothing good's gonna come of that, okay? So don't touch them. And then lastly, uh, you always wanna do your saltwater soaks with it, okay? You know, the healing period on those guys is usually around two to three months, you know, somewhere in that ballpark. So for two to three months, it is a really good idea to use saltwater soaks once or twice a day. Now, saltwater soak is going to be, go to the grocery store, get a gallon of distilled water. Now, distilled water, it's like a dollar. It's in the drinking water section. Any grocery store is gonna have it, really cheap and easy. From there, shoot over to the salt section, get some non-iodized sea salts. Um, non-iodized is also like a dollar or so, okay? So really cheap and easy uh, there too. Uh, once you have both those products, when you get home, it's four teaspoons of the salt, pour it into that gallon of distilled water. Um, shake it up, that gives you a big jug to kind of keep around the house. And once or twice a day, you want to do a saltwater soak with that saltwater so solution. How do you do that? So with most piercings, you would take a coffee cup or a shot glass, you know, never use a paper or plastic cup, only glass or porcelain. Fill it up with a saltwater solution, microwave for a few seconds, so it's like barely body temperature. And with most piercing, you would want to submerge the piercing. Now, obviously, the back of the neck, you're not gonna be able to submerge your piercing, okay? It's gonna be really tricky to do that. So, the second best way would be to do a compress. Now, how do you do a compress? Compress would be where you take that same warm saltwater solution, take a clean paper towel, fold it up, dunk it in that warm saltwater solution, and just drape it over the back of, the, of your neck, okay? You wanna drape it over there for seven to 15 minutes, all right? So you can be doing a million other things while that thing is just sitting there soaking your piercing, okay? So hopefully that all makes sense to you guys and hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, we'll see you guys next video.